This is News Night, where we go above and beyond the headlines. I'm Pio Antiveros. Our top stories catch a rare lunar eclipse. We give you a glimpse of the super blue blood moon from an observatory here in Manila and from the vicinity of Mayon Volcano in Albay. Authorities admit drug trade persists inside the new Belibid prison and they reveal new personalities are involved. And heads up, government is raising document processing fees in line with the new tax reform law. You're seeing live pictures from Albay, the super blue blood moon in the background as Mayon volcano remains in a stage of unrest. Earlier, our team there says residents and tourists arriving in Legazpi City for a good view of the rare lunar eclipse. Authorities say people will see a darker red moon because of the eclipse, coupled with a blue shade because of dust particles in the air and a larger sized moon as it comes closer to the Earth. But state volcanologists say this event will not have any effect on Mayon's rumblings. Super blue blood moon is a total lunar eclipse occurring with a blue moon. This is a very rare phenomenon, so sky gazers are thrilled. Let's bring in our Trisha Terada live from the UP Astronomical Observatory in Quezon City. Trisha, what do you see there? Well, Pierre, right now we almost have a full house here at the UP Observatory in Quezon City. Many stargazers have started arriving as early as 4 this afternoon. It's a family affair for some, while others take the time to bond over with their friends and classmates. Now, some even prepared mats, some even brought their telescopes, and others are just ready with their phones. Uh, ready to snap any time the moon comes out. Well, earlier the moon appeared past 6 this evening but then it was partly hidden by the clouds and then once again, uh, just a few minutes before we went back on the air, the moon showed itself fully once again and the people started clapping and cheering with their phones out, taking photos of the moon. Now, Experts say that this is a very rare opportunity and a literally once in a blue moon lunar eclipse, the super blue blood moon. Some even, uh, and the, some even say that uh, they are bringing their families here so they can witness or children could witness uh, this rare opportunity. Super moon means the moon is nearer to the earth, making it look big and uh, 30 times bigger or brighter. Blue moon is when the moon appears bluish because of the dust that um, or smoke particles in the atmosphere and it usually takes place in about two and a half years but in our case this is the second time that we will view it the blood moon refers to the total lunar eclipse and now what's really interesting here is that all these three will be happening tonight and the last time this happened was actually 37 years ago experts say this will only affect bodies of water meaning the tide will be slightly higher because of the total lunar eclipse and uh, of the blood moon now these have nothing to do with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. However, the blood moon will uh, look better near Mayon Volcano as the ashes suspended in the air will make its color look mo uh, mo darker or a little darker red. Now, the phenomenon will happen again after 19 years, so that's in 2037. Pia? Trisha Tarada, live from UP Diliman. Let's now head on over to the CNN World Weather Center to learn more about this rare event called the Super Blue Blood Moon. Hello, CNN Philippines. Tom Sater here. Full moon tonight, second one of the month, but this is going to be a lunar triple whammy. Get ready for this one. Obviously, it's going to be gorgeous in the night sky later on this evening. Uh, we do have full moon names. Of course, they vary country to country and around the world. Uh, and you can even break it down into seasons. You'll understand that we're calling this one the snow moon, so it could be a little different. You ever use the phrase, once in a blue moon? Doesn't happen very much. It has nothing to do with the color of the moon. It's the second full moon of that month. That's the modern day definition. In the past, it was just during whatever season you have, if you picked up an extra one, that was considered blue moon. That's going to happen. A supermoon means it's much closer to the Earth. It's going to see larger. It's going to seem brighter, about 14% brighter. It's not the apogee. It's the perigee, which brings it in its orbit closer to Earth. So it's going to be much brighter. Now you toss in a, a total lunar eclipse for you, beginning at 1251 GMT, ending at 1407. If you have an idea of, well, who may see totality of this full moon, 
all of Asia. There's Japan, uh, China, Japan. There's the Philippines there, parts of Indonesia, Malaysia, Australia, New Zealand. Not so much for the western U.S., but it will include Alaska and Hawaii. So I know everyone's getting ready for this. It's going to be quite something. But again, it's not just a lunar eclipse. This is a blood red moon. And what happens with that, it's quite interesting. When the Earth passes between the sun and the moon, the moon in its Earth's shadow then the moon reflects that light back to Earth, but it's the red part of the uh, light spectrum that gets bent during in the Earth's atmosphere, which gives us this blood uh, red effect here. So again, it should be spectacular. Again, a lunar triple whammy, a blue moon, a super moon, and a blood moon lunar eclipse. Get ready to enjoy this one, everyone. I expect to see some pictures. Send them to hashtag CNN weather. Have a great day and an even better evening tonight. Back to you. That's meteorologist Tom Sater giving us details about tonight's super lunar whammy straight from the CNN Global Headquarters in Atlanta. While health officials deny the existence of a so-called mafia that allegedly benefited from the controversial dengue vaccine program, facing the commission and appointments for his confirmation hearing, Health Secretary Francisco Duque said he saw no evidence that would confirm this. A former consultant under then-DOH Secretary Pauline Ubial earlier claimed that DOH officials divided among themselves some 550 million pesos from the Dengue Fund. But DOH Undersecretary Carolina Talino denied the allegation. She explained the money is still with the Philippine Children's Medical Center, and this was verified by the Commission on Audit. PCMC oversaw the purchase of Dengue the Commission on Appointments, meantime, deferring voting on Duque's appointment. Senator Gringo Nasan, who led the hearing, said committee members still have questions on many issues at the DOH. The fact that Sinus spent means that we want to uh, think about it, his responses to our questions. Hindi kami, I, I'm not prepared to say na okay na, satisfied na yung commission. I cannot second guess the uh, CA, uh, whatever it is that... Uh, they uh, have picked up from uh, my answers to uh, their uh, manifold questions. I'll, uh, let's uh, respect the time that they need to make whatever decisions uh, is appropriate. We appreciate all your online comments and our top stories. Keep them coming through our social media pages at CNN Philippines. We're also live right now on Facebook. U.S. President Donald Trump delivered a packed or a State of the Union address to a packed hall, his first since taking over the White House. He focused on his plans for immigration, infrastructure, and the economy, touting what he sees as a successful first year in office. CNN's Kristen Holmes has more on the president's speech and his pitch to the U.S. Congress and the American people. The President of the United States. Yeah. President Donald Trump delivering his first State of the Union address before a divided Congress and a divided know, nation. That no people on earth are so fearless or daring or determined as Americans. The theme of the speech, a safe, strong and proud America. One week after a government shutdown and another potential shutdown looming next week, the president put forth his plan for immigration and urged Congress to act. I am extending an open hand to work with members of both parties, Democrats and Republicans, to protect our citizens of every background, color, religion, and creed. The president discussing the threat of North Korea and had tough words for the rogue nation. North Korea's reckless pursuit of nuclear missiles could very soon threaten our homeland. We are waging a campaign of maximum pressure to prevent that from ever happening. Congressman Joe Kennedy of Massachusetts offering a very different vision in the Democratic response. This administration isn't just targeting the laws that protect us. They're targeting the very idea that we are all worthy of protection. Several Democratic lawmakers chose to boycott the speech, the president with approval ratings around 40 percent, hoping to find partners across the aisle in 2018 with a sweeping infrastructure bill. Tonight I'm calling on Congress to produce a bill that generates at least $1.5 trillion for the new infrastructure investment that our country so desperately needs. On Capitol Hill, I'm Kristen Holmes.
Tomorrow night, we sit down with newsmakers to talk about the immense power of media and the responsibility that comes with it. Joining us are PCO Undersecretary Joel C. Eggo, Rappler CEO Maria Ressa, and journalists Melinda Quintos de Jesus and Paul Gutierrez from the National Press Club. Join our discussion on On the Record tomorrow at 7 here on CNN Philippines. The drug problem continues in the new Bilibid prison. The Drug Enforcement Agency admits the illegal drug trade persists with the use of cell phones. And don't miss out on this rare phenomenon. Find out exactly what a super blue blood moon is later on in the show. This is Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. This is Newsnight on CNN Philippines. The Justice Department will release a resolution on the hazing death of law student Horacio Atio Castillo III by mid-February. In a memorandum issued today, the agency said its prosecution panel is evaluating all evidence and affidavits submitted by state witness Mark Ventura and other respondents. Ventura detailed the hazing process that left the 22-year-old UST student unconscious. The Justice Department reopened the Atios case on January 12th in the wake of Ventura's statement. The Senate Committees on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs and Justice and Human Rights stated in their report, Atio died on September 17th at the hands of Aegis Juris Fraternity members during hazing rights. The report also recommended USD Law Dean Anilo Divina's disbarment for failing to report Atio's death after knowing about it. More than a year after the lower house investigated the proliferation of drugs in the new Bilibid prison, the Drug Enforcement Agency admits the drug trade still persists inside the correctional facility through the use of cell phones. Joyce Elas tells us more. It appears it's still business as usual for drug lords inside the new Bilibid prison. In a congressional hearing on Wednesday, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency confirms some inmates still engage in drug transactions from inside the Bilibid. PIDEA officials reveal there are now new personalities involved in the illegal trade. What is happening inside Bilibid is yung transaction lang po ng, ng illegal drugs. What is important in the drug trade, po, Your Honor, is yung pag-establish po ng uh, dis distribution network. The Bureau of Corrections says inmates trade drugs outside the jail using cell phones. This problem on the use of cell phones was already raised in previous congressional hearings. Justice Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre at the time even said the DOJ would purchase signal jammers to address the problem. The agency says two signal jammers have been installed in Building 14, where the high-profile drug lords are detained. But they also admit there are still no signal jammers in the maximum, medium, and minimum security compounds. Yung pong jammer natin sa maximum, uh, under the process of procurement, procurement. po yung iba. Ang um, problema, wala atang capital outlay na binigay. When asked why inmates still have cell phones, officials claim it's difficult to control the entry and use of these. Underman. Underman. Gabi, 12-8 po na shift. Wala nang opisina, wala na rin ibang gwardiya. Ang nandun na lang po siguro mga 20. 20 personnel, including their officials. Imagine sir, ang laman ng bilibid 17,000. Ang nag-handle 20. 
Bucor officials say inmates who were earlier caught using cell phones or dealing drugs were sent to Building 14, an isolated area and the only place where there are signal jammers. Joyce Ila, CNN Philippines. The Justice Department files another drug case against suspects in the smuggling of shabu from China. Among those charged were Richard Tan, owner of the warehouse where the drug shipment was found, fixer Mark Taguba, and alleged middlemen Manny Lee and Kenneth Dong. They are accused of transporting and delivering dangerous drugs and conspiring to commit the crime. If convicted, they can be jailed for life and made to pay a fine of up to 10 million pesos. We're also learning that Mark Taguba has surrendered at the NBI following the arrest order issued by Manila Court. We're trying to reach out to authorities and Taguba's lawyer, Raymond Fortune, for more details. The Philippine Statistics Authority is raising document processing fees. That's amid the implementation of the new tax reform law. Beginning Friday, February 2nd, delivery of documents will cost 15 pesos more. If you're requesting for the delivery of either birth, marriage, or death certificates, you have to prepare 330 pesos. The certificate of no marriage record or senomar, meanwhile, costs 430 pesos. For deliveries outside the country, that will cost you around $20 for either birth, marriage, or death certificate, and over $25 for a senomar. Now an eruption of emotions as lawmakers tackle various issues on transportation, including traffic management plans and railway safety. Discussions were going quite well until tension escalated between the Speaker of the House and the MRT General Manager. Our AC Nichols tells us what happened. It was supposed to be a regular congressional briefing on MRT projects. But tempers ran high when lawmakers challenged MRT General Manager Rodolfo Garcia's competence to run the train system. House Speaker Pantaleon Alvarez lost his cool when Garcia said they are checking whether the Chinese trains from Dalian are still functional. As Transport Secretary during the Arroyo administration, Alvarez supervised the MRT. We are looking at the Dalian train kung magagamit namin ito. Hindi nga pwede yan. Hindi nga match ang signaling. Hindi po pa ba alam hanggang ngayon yan? Nalagyan na po ang apat. Ay, naku, nang, uh, pa, pwede pong lagyan ang, uh, ang uh, Dalian train ng uh, signaling. Sigurado ka I was yan? assured by... Uh, Sigurado ka? Of... Sigurado ka? Then I will resign kung hindi ako sigurado. Okay. Please take note. The hearing discussed ways the management can take to ease congestion. Garcia almost walked out as some lawmakers moved to cite him in contempt, denouncing the officials' disrespect of proceedings. But things cooled down as quickly as they heated up. Garcia apologized to Alvarez and the hearing went on. When asked if he was serious about resigning, Garcia admitted he was considering it. Major pressure na pa ako sa SGM. Okay, thank so, you. Thank you. Jim. I'm really contemplating of uh, thank you. going out. While he says he's not pushing Garcia to step down, Alvarez says it's obvious why he challenged the MRT officials' competence. Mahigit isang taon na rin eh. Meron ba ang pagbabago? I, I think it's just uh, getting worse. Garcia's decision to quit is in limbo at this point. But what is sure is that riders continue to suffer from frequent train breakdowns. Just last week, operations halted and passengers were forced to get off because of a smoke inside the train. Despite this, officials insist the train is safe and passengers can expect better service late February. By then, spare parts would have arrived so that there will be more trains on the tracks. AC Nichols, CNN Philippines. Facebook is banning advertisements for digital currencies to help crack down on scammers. That ban includes ads for payment systems like Bitcoin. The social media giant said in a blog post today or Tuesday, promotions for these kinds of products may be deceptive and threaten security. The new ad policy, which Facebook calls intentionally broad, also restricts ads for binary options and initial coin offerings. The policy will be enforced on Instagram as well. 
San Miguel Corporation gets the highest rating for its latest bond issue in a disclosure to the Philippine Stock Exchange. The diversified conglomerate said it received a triple A rating from the Philippine Rating Services Corporation. That is for the company's proposed fixed rate bond issue of up to 30 billion pesos. This means San Miguel has a stable outlook and minimal credit risk. The rating also reflects the conglomerate's sustainable income stream and cash flows, strong market position, and solid debt management position. Get ready to shrink once again as we give you a sneak peek at Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp and find out how you can better appreciate the super blue blood moon that is expected to show up tonight. This is Newsnight where we go above and beyond the headlines. Welcome back. Sad news from Hollywood. American actor Mark Soling has died. The 30-year-old was best known for his work on the TV show Glee. Let's watch this. I'm sorry I don't understand where all this is coming from. I thought that we were fine. It don't seem so lonely We fill it up with only two One and Touching one A sneak peek at the sequel of Marvel's Ant-Man, a casting news for actress Emily Blunt and an untold story about the Black Panther. Seen as David Daniel has it all in tonight's Hollywood Minute. If I'd asked you, would you have come? I guess we'll never know. But if you had, you'd have never been caught. Get ready to get small all over again. The first trailer is out for Ant-Man and the Wasp, the follow-up to 2015's Ant-Man. Paul Rudd, Michael Douglas, and Evangeline Lilly return for the Marvel sequel, which hits theaters July 6th. You gave her wings and blasters. So I take it you didn't have that tech available for me? No, I did. The whole experience was very magical and surreal. Emily Blunt is taking a cruise. She's set to star in Disney's Jungle Cruise, based on the classic theme park attraction. Dwayne Johnson is already on board for the hoped-for franchise, which is scheduled to begin shooting in May. My son, it is your time. Black Panther is ready to storm theaters February 16th, but it might have arrived 25 years ago, starring Wesley Snipes. The actor tells The Hollywood Reporter he tried to make a movie about the iconic African character in the 90s when he was writing a string of hits. But script and director problems and CG technology that just wasn't there yet kept Wakanda in the comics until now. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Showbiz sisters Tony and Alex Gonzaga may be teaming up for a project. On Instagram, Alex posted this photo with Tony in front of the 1017 Productions office with the caption, The Dream Project. 1017 is the production company of Tony's husband, director Paul Soriano. The company also shared a photo of the sisters on its official Instagram page. The caption also hinted at a possible project, saying, quote, Thank you, Tony and Alex, for today's concept brainstorm. Looking forward to our sister's project this 2018. 
From two sisters to two brothers, celebrity brothers Casey and Troy Montero are in for a different kind of adventure in the new show, Worst Vacation Ever. They scour the internet and social media for places with worst vacation reviews and check them out. Speaking to CNN Philippines, Casey and Troy share what it's like working with each other on the show. No, I don't think we fight. I mean, um, or disagree. We're, we're both af I, we disagree, but it's mostly in the post-production side. Since we are producing the show, um, half of, I guess, our time on the show was, was making it and the rest was finishing it. Mm -hmm. And the finishing part, you know, of course, creative differences and things like that come in and what should be seen and what not should be seen and things like that. Casey, how's it working with Troy and what have you learned from each other? I don't like working with <laughs> He's told me several times. I get texts all the times. I hate you. No, it, it's really cool to work with your brother. And uh, and like what we always say is like you always have. And, and one of the bis biggest things that I've learned with doing the show, and it might be kind of like the moral of the whole story, is you could be in a really bad situation. You could be in have, having the worst vacation ever. But if you're traveling with someone that you like, you can kind of turn that situation around and kind of look back and be like, huh, this really is a bad vacation, but it's kind of fun. Worst Vacation Ever airs every Monday at 8.10 p.m. on Discovery Channel. And before we go, it's a super moon, a blue moon, and a blood moon all happening in one night. Some stargazers can't wait to witness the rare event. Find out exactly what a super blue blood moon is. Here's another explainer. Take a look. CNN Philippines will continue to monitor the Super Blue Blood Moon tonight. That is it for tonight. Thank you for your time. I'm Pia Ontiveros. See you again tomorrow for News Night, where we go above and beyond the headlines.